Please allow me to introduce myself. I'm a man of stealth and waste. <laughs> they call me Murdoch, a sensational bass player with gorillas. And right now, eh, you're peeking at the essential gorillas and access some areas tour of the most animated band in the world. Now, please allow me to introduce two chaps, you know, who have health and taste. If you can't go to uh, to school and learn how to uh, break a cartoon band. Roadies! Oh, man, you know, they don't help get up themselves. Eh? It'd almost be a funny idea to bring them back to, in 30 years' time as old, fat, Pop stars. And then, uh, while these chats roll out the story of gorillas and present it to you on a silver-plated platter, uh, I should be, well, you know, soaking up the minibar in room 23. Basically, we had a bachelor pad for a year. <laughs> <laughs> we held many a good party. Yeah. And, um... Through, from the chaos, um, the idea for Gorillas was born. From the debris. Yes, we, de <laughs> we definitely um, stared into the abyss on several nights when we, when we were sharing that house together. We were watching MTV and sort of cussing all yeah. the bad things. It, it, it did actually happen on our couch, in our flat, watching MTV and going, surely, Lord, this... This, 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 this isn't this isn't the only future. It creates these kind of sort of crazy lifestyle aspirational sort of complexes in people's brains. Do you understand what you're on about? I haven't got Scooby me. It wasn't quite that kind of sort of pedantic the conversation. It was, no, more, it was like, more like, more like more, <laughs> it was more like that's rubbish. Yeah. <laughs> Who does he think he is? Yeah. That video is crap. You know, one of the few times where those late night conversations actually came to some yeah. fruition. We started because we wanted to do something that would that would be better for MTV because we just felt that what people were producing, the output was not, in our mind, as kind of sort of intelligent. It wasn't using the potential. All pop videos should be brilliant. It's not hard to do, and yet there's so many of them are rubbish. Every six videos is a great video, and it's like fantastic. And when it works, it really works. <laughs> oh. <sighs> and my controller's broken. Well, you always say that. He's put a lot of work into the characters' backgrounds and stories. There are things that we've we've done that our friends have done that have ended up being things the characters have done. This is the payoff. In a nutshell, 2D singer who used to work in an organ shop in Crawley, and Murdoch's the bass player, and he used to be a terrible cad. Listen, when do I get out of here? Not for a long time, my friend. <laughs> who ran raided the uh, organ shop? and crashed his car into Tootie's face, giving him an eight-ball fracture in his eyeball and putting him into a coma. And part of his community service was that he had to look after Tootie in a coma. And so we took him out uh, racing in his car. Had a car crash. Tootie went through the windscreen, got another eight-ball fracture, emerged from his coma, a genius musician. No matter how bad he behaves or outrageous they are, they're quite lovable. They don't sort of harm you, you know? Well, it depends on what cartoons you're watching. Why don't you jump in next to me and come and feel the quality of these sheets? Real Egyptian silk. Mm -hmm. you go. We knew nothing about Noodle first album. She arrived in a FedEx crate. She didn't speak English, and so there was nothing to know about her. Get out! And then the second album, she sort of became an important character. Russell is from New York. He was possessed by his dead pal, uh, Del, the funky homo sapien. He wasn't really possessed by Del, the funky homo sapien. Who is alive. Who is actually alive. But anyway, that's how we, that was how we got the rap into it to start with, which was kind I of... Think, I, well, no, but I think, I think that's, that's actually was, was a key moment. Because once we started thinking like that, then, then, then the idea of, God, we can work with whoever we like, sort of evolved. Oh, 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 oh,
Actually, I used to go to college with a girl called Jane, who then went on to another college and met Graham and the Dave from and Alex. Um, went out with Hello, Graham. Sorry. Went out with Graham. I met Graham through her because we stayed friends. And then I met Damon through then Graham. He, he, then he and then she finished with Graham and then started seeing me. And I married her. She's the mother of my two children. So that's how we met. Yeah, to be totally honest with you, part of the reason why Probably Graham and I don't have a great relationship at the moment it's because I'm mates with him as well, you know. It's all been good. so candid here. Basically, both of us have got so much on each other that it's yeah. it's impossible, I really. Can, I can sink you and you can sink me. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, it's, it's a healthy We can't fear. afford to fall no, out for real. We really can't. Romeo. It's there. OK, my little winkle pickers, that's your lot for part one. Here's a, here's a taster of part two. For the whole performance, we were literally just holding our breath because anything could go wrong. Stick around for some more of the good stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah. still coming up, coming up. It's there. Oh. It's there. <sighs> Welcome back, my fillies. I knew you'd be thirsty for more. If you just joined the bandwagon, then you missed this joyous nugget. It did actually happen on our couch, in our flat, watching MTV. But never fear. Keep staring into my glorious abyss and enjoy some of this action. In about 10 years' time, they'll be able to do good as the way we've always really yeah. wanted to do it, but the technology doesn't exist. I'll leave the chit-chat to the boys. I let the music speak for me. Yes, indeed, I do. <laughs> we went to the record company with, like, four drawings and four rough demos and said, you want to do this? Yeah. The truth of it was that uh, I made a deal with them. They said, we want to put a greatest hits record out. And I said, well, I'll let you do that if you sign this idea that Jamie and myself have had. And that was the deal. <laughs> it's the first time it's ever been done, so there isn't a blueprint. There isn't a kind of, you can't go to a school and learn how to uh, break a cartoon band. I hate making videos. That could be worse. Really? That's supposed to be lucky, you know. Oh. We've managed to, to devise a system where we don't actually discuss anything. And we can actually do an entire Gorillaz album without seeing each other once. <laughs> she sends the tunes over in their rawest state, and I just listen to them continuously and sort of draw with that. It's a good it's a good way of drawing with music playing loud in the background. This is where like the magic happens, you know. The last two albums is I've kind of done about half of it just on my own in my studio. I don't like working with producers right from the beginning of anything. I like taking it to a certain place and then, you know, I really enjoy the sort of interaction when someone goes, Well that's good, that's not so good, that you know, I like I don't think actually initially that the idea was to work with other people. The first record we worked with Del Funky Home Sapien, we worked with Tina Weymouth and Chris France, and then this album just full of people really. A reflection of the society they live in, yet it's not. It's not over preaching, it's uh, it's there if you want to find it. De La Soul. You gotta love Murdoch, man. He just, you know, he's the ultimate rock star of the crew. I like Russell, he's always on the phone taking care of it. <laughs> I've always preferred a tribe called Quest, anyway. Far Side, Roots Maneuver, Nana Cherry. An amazing thing to be part of, but it's also quite a, a funny puzzle. Nana, I know she loves me. She probably doesn't even know it, but I know she does. Sean Ryder. I can't really explain it. You just, it's, 
It's sort of like just being part of something sort of special with all those great people. You know, we just work with people that are like-minded. And the whole thing has been like a kind of a rock and roll kaleidoscope, you know? We've sold a lot of records. Between the two albums, you know, it's, getting, it's closer to 15 million than it is 10. Is it? Yeah. Damn! Somebody owes me some money. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna be jumping you next time you asleep, and I don't think neither of us gonna make it. You dig? I think with the first day we had to push them quite a lot. I mean, we had this stupid idea that that we would keep our involvement quiet, and no one would know, which was stupid. And I think the first interview we ever did on the phone, we tried to be the characters, didn't we? We all fell to pieces. Yeah, we had a massive row. Yeah, huge <laughs> he, I was trying to be 2D and he was trying to be Murdoch. And halfway through, he was like, look, said the girl, mate, I can't do this. It's Damon, right? <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, what are you doing? And we had a big old row, but it was the right thing to do. No one knows about that, actually. But it, 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 we do now. Hey, face ache! It's just about having good ideas. I mean, a lot of the stuff we do on the website, we do really cheaply and really lo-fi and we've got some really crappy bits of stupid animation that we've done ourselves but it, it works because the ideas are funny so we just you know we have to find a way of not convincing people because obviously you know they're not real but convincing people that you know to buy into the characters in the same way in the same way you buy into the simpsons they're not real but i believe they're real and we don't even exist. Ah, back in the day. You know what they say, if you can remember the gig, then you weren't really there. I think that's what they say. and unplugged, live and in the raw. And that's what we're all about. So we turned the knob to 11 at the MTV Europe Music Awards and gave good show in front of the entire world, really. Really old techniques, the smoke and mirrors, but then it's just about firing pictures at slanted invisible screens and bouncing them back and look like it's all quite technical. There was a, such a long list of things that could go wrong. For the whole performance, we were literally just holding our breath. And if it went wrong, it would be a spectacular mistake, live on TV. For us, it was interesting as an experiment. You know, it did look good. What we did at the Grammys was, I suppose, was another, was another kind of sort of uh, taster for everyone of what, of, of what will come when we have, Mad what was her name? Madonna? Madonna. <laughs> We had Madonna on, um, sort of, as a hologram, like, like the characters, on the same stage. One of the technical things about how we create these holograms is that you... What? The music can't be too loud. The music it can't makes be too loud. The screen vibrate. It makes, the, it makes the, them vibrate and they start shaking. So we open the Grammys. <sighs> But the music's really quiet, and then as soon as it transfers to Madonna's music, it's like, <laughs> and it makes her look like she's like, and it's like, and we're just sitting there going, we'd well, take Dennis Hopper right to watch off. it, and he was, we'd be right off because <laughs> purely because of the volume, you know, it's about volume sometimes. It's there. <sighs> to those about to rock, I salute you. Uh, to those of you about to watch the next part of the Essential Gorillas, allow me to prick your memory of what's been. <laughs> We've managed to, to devise a system where we don't actually discuss anything. And we can actually do an entire Gorillas album without seeing each other once. And a glance into my shiny balls tells me that you'll soon be getting a shot of this. We don't think we're going to make another album at all. Coming up. Coming up. Coming up. It's dead! I can't talk now. I'm naked. <laughs>
It's there. Oh, oh good gravy. Are we back on? Oh, next time I'll just go in the sink. Oh. Now, uh, we've had a good inning so far, so you know, let's not screw things up in the dying moments, eh? If we go too far with it now, we'll spoil it, and then we won't be able to come back if we want to. Relax, pull up a pew, and uh, let's see what else gorillas can bring to the party. If I know these two, the answer to that is a litre of cider and three mute goths. Brilliant. Manchester International Festival at the Opera House, and I think everyone on the last night just felt like this can't possibly be the only time we ever do this. And uh, a week later, we thought, well, let's do it in New York next time. Roots Manoeuvre is just a very positive side of black British culture and really articulate and intelligent. I didn't realise the magnitude of it until I woke up with a headache yesterday. Song. They come on, they do their bit, they go off. It has a good vibe about it, because it's not about any one individual artist, and it's not about any one person, it's about everyone, and that includes the audience. We don't think we're going to make another album. Not in the same way we've just done. No. It, it would maybe manifest itself in a, in a different form. Music and moving picture will always be married together and it's just, it's, it's, it's about trying to find new and exciting and intelligent ways to, to do that basic thing. <laughs> Coming back with Demon Days and it being such a success in so many ways, um, after four years gap, shows that it doesn't really matter, it, you know, it doesn't age, it's not... Cartoons don't age. They evolve, but they don't age. It'd almost be a funny idea to bring them back sort of in 30 years' time as old, fat pop stars trying to convince you they've still got that magic and him purposely do a rubbish album to go <laughs> with it. <laughs> but it would work because a cartoon has. In about 10 years' time, they'll be able to do Gorillas the way we've always really wanted to do it, but the technology doesn't exist. So, you know, 10 years' time, they'll be sitting there and there. We've had enough of it for the moment. We want to do something else. You know, it's not about world domination. If we go too far with it now, we'll spoil it, and then we won't be able to come back if we want to in four years or two years or, you know. It's not a career. It's just an idea which came about sitting on a couch watching MTV. MTV, right? Murdoch Television. <laughs> Well, um, thanks, sir, uh, for listening to those fellas, but uh, I've got uh, ladies waiting in my wagon right now, <laughs> looking to study some of the old Murdoch finger-picking techniques and a little slap bass. <laughs> right, that's your lot. On your way. Oh, ladies, that's right. Uh, this class is all about the G-string. <laughs> Move your finger up. Oh, yeah, now pluck it. Oh, that's good. Yeah, here we go. Uh, Role and uh, the executive producer Richard Godfrey. Oh, yes, Jez Breeding. I wonder if he has. Oh, the assistant producer William Vokes Dudgeon. You try saying that, huh? Come on. And the editor Paul Bussey should be Paul Busy, really, shouldn't he? The wonderful producer, stroke director Mal Wharton. Now that is what I call a shiny metal war dog.